Hello everybody and welcome to the first lesson on the organization of the human body. In order to complete this lesson all you're going to need is a book and a pen. In your book I'd like you to write down our title which is levels of organization and for your starter activity I'd like to write down these five objects in order of size. I'm going to put five seconds on the clock. If you need more time pause the video and when you finish we'll go through it together. Okay, we are finished. So putting these things in order of size, starting with the smallest is the brick. We then have the wall and then the room and then a house and then a city. This is the hierarchy of organization of a city from smallest to biggest. In today's lesson, we are gonna look at the hierarchy of organization in a multicellular organism like you and like me. We're also going to state some examples of tissues and organs and organ systems in the human body and explain why multicellular organisms require so many different cell types. So your body is organized in a very similar way to the city. In a city you have the brick, which is the smallest unit of the city. You have the wall, which is a collection of bricks. You have a room, which is a collection of walls. You have a house, which is a collection of rooms. And you have a city, which is a collection of houses. The smallest living unit of an organism is the cell. If you have a collection of cells with a similar function, then that gives you a tissue, examples being muscle tissue, nervous tissue, connective tissue, and epithelial tissue, which is what we call the tissues which make up the skin. A collection of tissues with a similar function gives us an organ. Examples of organs are bone and skin. A collection of organs with a similar function gives us an organ system. Here we have the organs in which food passes through, and which makes up part of the digestive system. Now, what I'd like you to do is match up these five key words to their definition. And if you need an extra challenge, I'd also like to explain how the organization of the human body is similar to that of the organization of a city. I'm going to put five seconds on the clock. And if you need more time, pause the video. And when you finish, we'll go through it together. Okay, we all finished. So starting with the smallest, the cell is the smallest living unit of an organism. A collection of cells with a similar function is a tissue. A collection of tissues with a similar function is an organ. A collection of organs with a similar function is an organ system. And then our largest is the organism, which is a collection of organ systems. Now that we've stated the hierarchy, we can check that off our list. Now what I'd like you to do is to copy this table it's got three headings, organ for organs, tissue for tissues, and system for organ systems. Underneath each one of these headings, I would like you to write down four examples of organs, four examples of tissues, and four examples of organ systems using the words which were around the table. If you need a challenge, I'd also like to explain why muscle is considered a tissue. Why is it not considered an organ? I'm going to put five seconds on the clock. If you need more time, pause the video, and when you're finished, we'll go through it together. Okay, we all finished. So starting with the stomach and working our way counterclockwise, we're going to put them into our table. Stomach is an example of an organ. Muscle is a tissue. Skin is an organ. It's made up of many epithelial tissues. Digestive system, hey, it ends in the word system must be a system. We have nervous, we have nervous tissue. Circulatory system, the giveaways in the system again. Brain is an organ, the respiratory system. Epithelial tissue, remember that's what our skin is made out of. We have the nervous system, connective tissue, and the liver is another example of an organ. Why is muscle considered a tissue? Why is it not an organ? Well, because muscle contains many cells with a similar function, but it only contains one type of tissue. So now we've stated some examples of tissues, organs and organ systems in the human body, but we still need to explain why we need so many different cell types and why we need so many different tissues and organs. Well, this depends on the situation you are in. Now what I'd like to do is to complete this table. It's got three headings, stimulus, which tells you the thing which is going to happen to the body. I want to know how your body would react in this column, and I want to know what organ system or organ systems are responsible for that reaction. If you want a bit of a challenge, then you can think of your own stimulus and then explain how your body would react to that. 
I'm going to put five seconds on the clock. If you need a bit more time, then pause the video, and when you finish, we'll go through it together. Okay, we all finished. So the light shining in the eye, how's the body going to react and what organ systems are responsible for that? Well, the pupils are going to get smaller and you're probably going to look away and shield your eyes. The organ systems responsible for this are the nervous system and the muscular system. If you're feeling hungry, you're probably going to get a rumbling in your belly and then you're probably going to go and eat some food. The organ systems responsible for this are the nervous system and the digestive system. If you burn your hand on a hot cooker, then you're probably going to move your hand away. And the organ systems responsible for this are the nervous system in order to detect that stimuli and that muscular system. Did you suggest any of the stimuli? If you did, I'd like to hear about it down in the comments below. So now we've explained why we need so many different cell types. It's so we can respond to all these different stimuli. Okay, we've got one more thing to do before we wrap this lesson up, and you get to choose either task A or task B. In task A, you can either write a paragraph summarizing today's lesson using the words in the red boxes, or task B, you could compare the organization of a city to the organization of the human body. Now only do task B if you didn't do it earlier on in the lesson as a challenge activity. If you're finished and you still need a bit more of a challenge, you can suggest how cells in a multicellular organism communicate with one another and try and explain why this communication is important. I hope you had a great lesson and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching the lesson. If you found it useful, don't forget to press the like button. And why don't you subscribe and press the bell icon as well so you know when the next lesson's available. You can also support me on Patreon and you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter and I appreciate all the support. And I'll see you next time.